You can now edit with CapCut on your PC or Mac by downloading their app from the Microsoft Store or from the App Store. And I'll be showing you exactly how to edit your videos from your PC or Mac with CapCut. Now I have the app open right here and we're gonna just jump right into it, show you how to edit with this software. So to start, I'm going to click Start Creating and that's gonna take me right into my timeline. To add footage to your project, we're just gonna scroll over to the Import section, click on this, and we can add our footage. Now, once you add your footage in here, you can simply drag and drop it right into your timeline and let go. As you can see, I just added that footage. I can do the same with this clip, let go, and it adds it into our timeline. Using my keypad, I can zoom in or I can zoom out. There's also here, this little knob where I can zoom in and zoom out and make those adjustments. And then using this white line, also known as the playhead, I can scroll through my footage and make sure everything looks great. If I want to rearrange my video clips, I just have to hold down on the mouse and I can drag my video clip to the other side, let go, and there we go, I have rearranged my clips. If I want to delete a video clip, there is a trash can right here that I can click on. And if I want to reverse an action, like bring back that video clip I just deleted, there is a undo button right here, a back button. I can click on that and it'll reverse any actions that I've done. If you wanna change the aspect ratio, you can just click on the original section here and you can change it to nine by 16. And then you can always click on the video clip and change the size to fit that aspect ratio. Now let's get into trimming your video clips. So there's two different ways you can do it. You can always hover your mouse on either side of your video clip and you'll see that your mouse turns to this little bar edge thing. If you hold your mouse down, you can drag your video clip to trim it like so. Um, you can do that on either side, but I find this to be the less effective way. What works better is to scroll to the spot you want to trim and you can either click this button here, which is the split button, or you can do the command displayed. Now on my screen, it says Command B because I'm on Mac, but depending on if you're on PC, you can use the keyboard shortcut. So I can click this button or click Command B and that'll split my clip in half. And then I can delete the side that I don't want either by clicking the delete key or by just clicking the delete button. Now this works especially well when you have talking going on in your videos. You'll notice in this video clip that there are little sound bars that you can see pop up right where I'm talking. So if I bring the playhead right over to where I'm about to talk, as you can see there, I can also zoom in if I want to see those little audio bumps better. I can align up right there. I can click Command B or the split button and then I can delete the other side and now the video is going to start right here where the audio bumps begin. And then in the spots where there are no audio bumps, I can always bring the playhead over and split and then split up to where the, the audio bumps begin again and delete. And I can kind of go through my footage and just get the spots and sentences where I'm actually talking. The split button also works really great if you're trying to cut something out of the middle. Like for example, you'll see there's no audio bumps over this really wide section. So I can click split here. So I can click on the video, click split or command B and I can trim this over to where I start talking again. And this side I could trim over to where I stopped talking there. And there we go. Now I've got all these audio bumps on the bottom here right where I'm talking. If you wanna do a crop in on your video, with the video selected, you'll notice the three, the four little dots on the end. You can actually grab those to increase the size of your video. You can also shrink your video, but I can zoom in like that and I can use my mouse to kind of drag the video clip around. So if I want it to be zoomed in for this part, like so, I can have it. And then when it gets to the next clip, it'll zoom back out. So that is how you crop in on a video. Now, while we still have this video selected, let's talk about the different video settings that you can control, which is gonna be on this far right side. So right now, video is selected and we're on the basic settings. And in here, you'll also see the scale. So if we wanna rearrange and increase the size, or change the position. We could technically, you know, change it here by punch, punching in these numbers here. You could also rotate it with this knob if we want to, um, which is optional. You'll also find the blend options, which are a little bit more advanced, so we don't need to get too deep into that. There's also a stabilization feature, 
where if you turn this on and you actually have some camera shake, it'll correct it and help stabilize your footage. And then there's also this facial beauty mode, which will, you know, help improve if you want your skin to look smoother, you know, take away the rosacea on my face. I can even affect my nose if I want to make it smaller. I can affect my eyes if I wanted to. All this different kind of stuff, including like some body stuff. Um, that options are all there within this software. Uh, if we go over to cutout, here you'll find chroma key as well as auto cutout, which right now currently only supports auto recognition of portraits. But if you have a green screen, you could use this to remove your background. There's also the mask option. So in here, you're able to apply masks, which is also a bit advanced. We'll talk about more advanced features in the next video in this series. And then there's also canvas, which if we were to make this a color like red, for example, basically, if this video was smaller, you would see the red behind it. But um, not as useful, but still just to let you know that it's there. Next to video, we have our audio settings. So here we can control the volume. We can control whether it fades in or fades out, which might be useful for music later. And then you also have a whole bunch of voice effects that you can apply to your audio. So if you want to have some fun there, there's that. You also have the speed option here. So if you want to speed something up or slow it down and do all those things, you have that access there. You also have the animation feature. So if you want something to fade in, fade out, do little transitions and stuff, you have access there. And then the adjustment section is where you can actually kind of color grade your footage. So if we scroll down, we can control things like the brightness, uh, the saturation. If we want to make things a little more colorful, you'll have all those options there. And then there's even some more advanced stuff like this HSL, where if I wanted to, I could select blue and decrease the saturation of all the blues or increase the saturation of all the blues, control its lightness and darkness, you know, some different things like that. Change the color of the blue, change the hue so I can make it more purple or make it green. You can have a lot of fun there with that, but that's where all those features are going to be. Now, one other thing to note is you can do keyframes here. Um, that's what these little diamond keys on the side of a lot of these different settings are. We'll get a little deeper into keyframes in the advanced video coming up, but you do have the option to add keyframes to your video. Now that we covered those settings, let's go over to the far left side and cover these options here. First, you have audio. So the audio here, you'll find a whole bunch of different music that you could potentially use. The only downside is it's going to be copyrighted music. You, If you are uploading this content to YouTube, you will get copyright strikes. If you're looking for a free way to add music, I'll leave a link down below in the description to show you how to add music for free. There's a few different sites you can use. Uh, if you're going the paid route, and just want to get the best music possible. I use Epidemic Sound. It's where I get the best music and sound effects for my videos. If you want to try it out for free for 30 days, I'll have a link down below in the description so you can test it out. Use the music during the free trial and you won't get a copyright strike, but that's usually the safer route to go with music. You're going to get a copyright claim. I don't know if I was saying strike before, but you'll get a copyright claim. And essentially what that'll mean is if you are a monetized channel, you're not going to be getting any revenue or not most of the revenue because you're using music you don't have a license for. Up next, we have the text section. So in here, you can add different text templates or text effects into your thing. So you can just click add here and it adds it as a layer to our timeline that we can move around. We can grab either side of it and extend it or decrease it. And here you have all a bunch of different text settings and fonts and different settings there that you can customize. You can also customize the animation if you want it to do cool transitions, as well as text to speech, which would be basically an automated voice speaking out your, your text on screen. So all that is right there. Up next, we have the stickers section. So in here, you can kind of go through these stickers and be able to add them into your timeline. You can just click on it and it'll add it as a layer that you can move around as well. You can also grab it on the screen and drag it anywhere you want. Um, but So that's pretty cool. We also have the effects section. So in here, there's a whole bunch of cool different effects that you can apply to your videos just by scrolling through. You can click on them. Uh, very similarly, if you click on one of these and add it, it's going to, you know, you'll be able to move it around anywhere and, you know, change the length and everything like that. You then have the transition section, which is used for if you do have two, two videos or more, you can apply transition in between any one of these clips. 
You have the filter section where you can apply filters to add more cool effects. If you do click on one and click add, you can also on the far right side here, choose how much of that effect to apply, you know, the strength of it. And then we kind of already talked about adjustments, but you can kind of find it here as well. Um, where if you click add to your timeline, you'll have this adjustment applied. Instead of, you know, just customizing the video's color by selecting it and then going to adjustment, by placing it on this, you can extend this over multiple clips and apply color grading effects. Now, once you are done, you can click the export button, adjust your settings how you like, and then click export and be able to upload it anywhere you want. And if you really wanna get the most out of this software, I'm gonna be covering a lot of the more advanced features in this video, so that way you can make the best videos possible. So be sure to head here next if you want to get into some more pro related tips and tricks. And I hope to see you over there.